And as young people, if you want to be excellent, you want to excel what you do, you have to be dead to the things you want to do. You have to put your mind, your soul in the things you want to do. And you have to launch out from your comfort zone because nothing grows at the comfort level, right? So the fear, you need to overcome the fear of criticism, which has been the problem of young people. Would I be loved? Would I be respected? Would I make, would I be successful? Would I be valued? And those, those things are things that affect us from doing the things would have wished to do. And most, most people who are going to the medical field would, be, would, would say, will I fail to medical school? Will I be successful? Will I have yeah. a job? You know, these are, these, are not, these are not things you should worry about, right? But you should worry about things that you can control. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to When the Moment Chooses You podcast. And here at this podcast, we have compassionate, courageous conversation. We create and inspire our destiny moments because every heartbeat matter. And I am extremely excited for my guest today. And my guest today has, I mean, the way that I met him virtually is on LinkedIn when I saw some of his artwork. And so I am going to introduce to you Chidi Berry. And you please fix that if I didn't do that right. <laughs> And uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to read your bio, and then I'm going to let you jump in and tell us a little bit more about yourself. So um, he's a medical student, a Nigerian medical illustrator, and a professional among the few in Africa. He is the creator, director of the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons, Young Continental Association of African Neurosurgical Societies, and creative director and chief medical illustrator of the Journal of Global Neurosurgery. He is also a junior committee member, World Federation of Neuro Neurosurgical Societies, Global Neurosurgery, and medical illustrator of International Center for Genetic Diseases, Harvard Medical School. He's passionate about contemporary illustrations of Black patients and has been acclaimed globally for creating the Black fetus illustration that went viral. He hopes to pursue a career in pediatric neurosurgery. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Shida Berry, for being with us. So you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself that's not on here? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shirley. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, it's a wonderful introduction, I would say. And um, thank you for having me once more. Um, I'm Chidi Eber Ibe because I know a lot of persons, uh, you know, actually I mispronounced my name, which is fine. Of I think it's quite very long. So I'm Chidi Eber Ibe. I'm an Nigerian, of course. I, I from a family of, of four, uh, for to be single parents. I lost my mom um, earlier in my life. Um, before then, I, I, did a, I did a first degree in chemistry at the University of Nigeria before I went on to pursue a career in medicine which I'm currently undergoing. And uh, for me, I'm passionate about art and medicine, and I use my creative processes. I mesh these two areas together uh, to solve the global problem, which is the lack of representation that we see today. I'm passionate about, of, about advocacy, about uh, community service, and about mentorship. So uh, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, that is wonderful. So I really, I want to go back and... um. I want to actually ask you about what inspired you to actually be in the field that you're in, especially with the medical illustration, because that's kind of rare. I hadn't heard about it, to be honest, um, until I, heard, I saw you and I was like, oh, I didn't even know that that existed until I started thinking about when I went through nursing school, all of the different graphics and things that I saw in books, it was um, white or Caucasian. Um, so, yeah, tell me how, how did that passion ignite? help us i mean unpack that story for us yes thank you for asking so um th that happened in 2020 during the lockdown where i mean before then i was a graphic designer so i reached out to this book um which i read earlier in my bio which is the association of future african neurosurgeons so i reached out to them and said i'm a graphic designer that i would love to work for you and you would pay me to work for you right so i received a prompt response that there are no resources to pay and because I have passion for medicine, I quickly said I wanted to volunteer to create designs for the organization. So there I met my mentor, Dr. Ulrich Sidney, and he saw my artworks and he knew I had passion for medicine. And he said, why not go into an area called medical illustrations? 
I mean, typically, I had never known of a field like that ever in my life, right? So I had to make research about medical institutions and they were beautiful, they were amazing, you know, because, I mean, I had seen images like this before, but I never knew people were the ones creating images like this. So it was a challenge for me to start creating this. I had to make research. I went to YouTube to watch videos, but sadly, there were no YouTube tutorials on how to be a medical illustrator. And um, so I had to pick up the challenge to being one and to training myself to becoming one. So I had deliberately teach myself. So that's where I started drawing. Then in the process of learning or looking for resources to be an illustrator, I realized that most illustrations on the internet were all white images. So then I said, this is a problem then we need to work towards solving this problem. So that's how I started illustration. That's how I started doing, doing black illustrations. And that's that's what has been keeping me up to now. Yeah, that is really amazing. Um, and when you say that um, representation matters, uh, what does that really mean? I mean, from your world, from your point of view, does that benefit us when representation matters, especially in medical illustration and when we go to school and see our textbooks? What's the... I mean, I mean, why should we have representation? Well, shortly after that image of the Black Fetus went viral last year, a lot of persons made comments on the internet that, that we do not need Black images, like, that we are all okay with our images being all white. And that is to simply say that they are saying that, that, that repetition do not matter. Well, statistically, also understanding that there has been an increase infant mortality rate has also been an increased maternal mortality rate. And all of these is premised on the lack of representation that we see in medicine. For example, let me go into dermatology, for example. You know, you'll bear with me that the way skin condition represents on black skin is different from how it represents on white skin. And we've had a lot of cases where a physician did not have the, uh, the, the, the expertise or the knowledge or the experience that using simple skin conditions on black patients. And because of this, that particular skin condition became worse, right? Mm -hmm. That's to say that representation really matters. Now, when we talk about representation, it simply means, you know, speaking up for the minority, speaking up for the underrepresented. And that's why it matters, because it has, because it, 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 if you look at the healthcare outcome, it affects, it affects the minority group, right? Because they have not been represented properly. And that's why this really is important. I mean... Some time ago, some time ago, there was a research carried out in Nigeria where medical students were asked to bring out a medical textbook and to flip through. I bet you most images in that textbook were all white skin illustrations. And most right. medical students in Nigeria do not know how to diagnose simple heat rash on the black skin. It's as sad as that, right? And that's why representation really matters. Because if you're looking towards having a universal health coverage, looking towards improving a healthy outcome, then they're on then it is all all of premised on proper representation, right? So that's why I say representation really does matter. For me as an artist, I use my artistic skills to talk about representation, right? For you who is, um, I mean, you have a podcast, you have a, a, a radio station, you use your you use your uh, your platform to talk about representation. And that's yeah. that's how that's how this works, right? So I mean, we cannot say it does not matter because it affects a lot of lives. We can't count number of persons who have, who, number of families have lost their loved ones because um, the physician didn't know right what to do at that particular time. So this it's really it, it, it's a striking issue. It's a big issue, and I would say that it's the issue of representation has just been a new topic of recent because people talk about diversity, talk about equity, but not much more talk how black people were ill treated. How black people I mean if you are pregnant and you are black, I mean you are not given equal health care attention. If you're pregnant, if you're if you're a black person and you're sickle celled, you are called a drug addict, right? So all of this is premised on representation, and that's why it really does matter. And that is amazing, and that's why I absolutely believe that you have been chosen for this moment and this season and this uh, world that we're in now to help bring transformation to the, I mean, to the level that you're on, especially in our physician population, I just think is absolutely amazing. So Jada Bear, what, what about your mentors? Um, who inspired you to do this? Yeah, I'm going to answer that in two ways, actually. First of all, when my mentor, Dr. Orrick Sitton, inspired me to do this, and, um, and, and he's the person that inspired me to do this, but what, what really inspired me 
was when I made a lot of readings, a lot of research, and I see that the Black community, that there's so much of contribution to be done in the Black community. And most times when Black people make contributions, they are not really recognized for that contribution. So this things inspired me and said, I wanted to be an agent of change in my society. And that has been an important thing for me. That has been a key factor for me, right? Because when I look at my environment, look at Africa, look at the black community, and I realize that there is so much that we can do to improving our lives, right? And that's when we can, when we stand as frontiers to identify a problem and to solve that problem. So yeah. seeing the black community has been my major source of inspiration. And that has been my major push. As, and most of, I, I talk about this a lot in my interviews, that what I do is not just for me, but for the, for the, for the, for the community and for, for our children, literally, because yes. there is so much we can do to giving them that beautiful future that they, that they hope to see. Yeah, absolutely. I just, um, I'm just so inspired. Now, my question is, have, have you been supported in doing this? Have you hit any roadblocks at all? Well, actually, I've, I've been supported. You know, I had people who said, I mean, really literally came to me, how can we support you? How can we push your work? Some person make donations. Some persons, you know, contributed to my studies. Some persons provided some um, equipment for my illustrations. Because when I started, I was just using a computer mouse to do illustrations, and they were very difficult to produce beautiful illustrations. So people make, people make support. People also give me opportunities to work with top firms globally, where I could also learn, where I could also meet um, important persons also and network. So it has been supportive. On the other side, I would say it has been denigrating because typically as a black person, as a black young person, it's difficult to initiate a change and have everybody love you for initiating a change and questioning a norm. You know, I have people who literally say, why is the world celebrating this young boy? I mean, we've been doing this for 30 years and nobody recognized what we do. So it's, I mean, that's what you said when the movie chooses you. I think the movie actually chose me, you know, and it, it, it's, a, it's amazing because people, people actually were making comments, you know, sad comments on the internet. And well, I actually understood that I was questioning a, a, a long age prejudice. And of course, they're going to be set back to this. So this has been the middle setback, but we are conquering them bit by bit, and we're having the world understand that there is more to be done in this regard. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I would call you, I would describe you as a disruptive innovator. <laughs> and that's what I think about when you, um, because, right. in, I mean, quite honestly, in 2020 is when I finally start speaking up as a Black person, as an African-American and leadership um, over my journey in, in nursing. And um, I remember that incident that happened with um, George Floyd and the unfortunate uh, murder of George Floyd. And so I was so distressed and just frustrated and I went into prayer and then I heard these words and the words came, what you do in this moment will determine your destiny and dictate your future. And so I had to move from anguish and anger to action. And so that's when I start sharing my story, really getting transparent of what things that I've experienced through my career because I had never really shared it before because there was this thought that... I can't really be my full authentic self because somebody might say something or I might make somebody uncomfortable, but boy, I got so disrupted that I didn't really care about making people uncomfortable anymore. And so that I just see you doing that. You're disrupting at so many different levels. And so just applaud you for that. Um, now, do you have, I, I, I heard a um, TED talk that you did and it was so good, but you had mentioned in there that, there was um like like family and things like that. Like when you get a dream, the dream that you have in your heart and you said your passion is to become a neurosurgical doctor, right? Right, right. And so when you get a dream in your heart, do you have any haters? Do you have, what, what's going on? <laughs> do you know what I mean by haters? Those people yes, that- Yes, I do. Yeah, tell me, tell me a little bit about that because I don't want people to get it twisted and think that it's going to be- peaches and cream as they pursue their dream. <laughs> no, it, it, it has never been. It has never been. I mean, for me, the beautiful thing about dreams, the beauty about chasing your dreams is that it's, it's, it's difficult to achieve. But once achieved, right, it, it gives you that sense of satisfaction. Because I, I, I know that when I, I wanted to be a doctor from whenever, like 
the moment I started thinking for myself, being a doctor always been my career. But you know, some years ago, I tried medical school for ten good years. I wasn't admitted into medical school, and family said, I mean, that I should leave medicine. I should leave medical school. That when will I finish medical school to come take care of the family? You know, when will I be a doctor? And it was sad. And my my family said, I mean, that if I'm going to go to medical school, that I'm going to sponsor myself through medical school. So the challenge for me, it was a big problem for me because the persons I felt should have supported me were not there to support me. So I literally had just myself to push through those t- tough times. So that's where I started learning skills because I understood that while in medical school, I really have to work for my tuition. So I had to learn some skills that would be as um, a foundation to raising money for school. But in that process of learning, of, of, of building, uh, building expertise, building competence, it was that process that I realized who truly I was, right? Understanding my strengths and weaknesses. I mean, some years ago, something amazing happened in my life. I was traveling to somewhere, and because I had I loved medicine, I loved doctors, I love I mean, I just loved the, the health case in the healthcare space. So I was traveling someday, I stood in front of a general hospital in Nigeria where I where I live. It was just very beautiful and had never been to a hospital in a long while. So I said to myself, when will I ever go into this hospital? You know, and because I was so excited about medicine, so uh, it, it, it's sad to say that that same day, I actually went into the hospital, right? But not as a doctor, not as uh, a medical student, but as a patient, because on my way back, we had an accident and we were rushed to that same hospital. Oh, wow. So then it, was dawned on, then it was dawned on me that my words are actually powerful, that if I was going to shape my future or shape my dreams, I really have to use my words to build that beautiful future that I, I had desired. So it has really been tough. It has really been a difficult moment. But now I bet my family is all supportive because they're seeing results, right, in being the healthcare space. So, it, I mean, dreams, dreams that are, I mean, what you created to do, the, the things you're created to becoming, right, will be difficult to achieve because that's the beauty about things. Because when things come easy, there's no, there's no value for them, right? right. So I, I, now I have value for my dream. Now I have value for the things I have waited all this life for. And and it's 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 been an amazing period of my life. Yeah. Wow. So uh, when will you be done with med school? I'm just curious. Yeah. So by hopefully by 2026, I should be done because I, um, I, I was supposed to be in Ukraine, but due to the crisis, of course, I'm back in Nigeria. So I'm currently um, pushing forward applications to other schools uh, in Europe and to continue my studies. So by 2026, hopefully, I should be done with medical school. That is awesome. You know, you said something super powerful about words and how powerful, because you did speak that out and you did wind up in the hospital and that's how powerful those words are. And so um, when I, when you think about words, like, how did you get your strength? Like, how did you get through all of these roadblocks and barriers and you're still pressing in becoming this wonderful physician that you dreamed of being? Like, what is it that helps keep you going? Well, I, I would say, first of all, I'm going to talk about my faith as a believer. You know, it's important to always acknowledge the, the source of your strength, the source of your power, which is God, which you cannot displace right that in our lives. So for me, when I, most times when things get difficult, now, I, I, I wouldn't say I've always been motivated all the time. There were times I was depressed. I literally wanted to commit suicide. There were times I, was, I felt incompetent. I felt worthless. But I understood that this is how life works, right? This is literally, this is life. And, and this is how great men are being built. And for me, those years, I, I, I focused on reading self-help books, right? I focused on reading good books. And then I understood that. And from the stories I read from, from great leaders, that when you see difficult times in your life, you know that you have a bright future, know that you have a great destiny. And those were the encouragement, those were the things that helped me that, that kept me through because I understood that looking at my family, right, literally, in my family, I wasn't the smartest, right? I was the least smartest in my family. I wasn't, I was just, I, I mean, I was just everything off for my family. And and then I understood that why was all of this happening in my life at this point? Then I understood that I have a greater future. I have a bright future. And those are the things that kept me going. For me, I understood that I, while growing up, I understand that I had never wanted to be a mediocre, right? I've always wanted to be someone who has developed himself, who has built a lot of, a lot of value 
in himself. And I understood that you cannot give the world what you don't have, right? Because if you want to be yeah. an impact in the world, you need to feel you need to build that competence in yourself to be able to speak to the world and change in the world. So I would say it has really been a difficult time in my life. But, but what has always kept me going is that none of this in my life ever lasts forever, right? So those tough times in my life, those difficult times in my life, try medical care for 10 years, you know, being depressed, you know, being called, being called, and the uh, being called a naughty one at home, you know, those difficult times in my life was what built me up, was what made me stronger. And I knew that the future had nothing but the best for me. Wow, that's wonderful. And what does the future look like for you? What would you say? Yes. Prophesy your future. <laughs> future is, of course, bright. You know, it's, 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 it's brighter than now because, you see, um, for me, life is very predictable, you know, Sometimes it's predictable because when you put in the right effort, in the right strategy at the right time, it's predictable to see good results. Just, just let's assume more like planting, right? If you plant at the right season and you water them and you allow the sunshine at the right time, of course you would, you would harvest, right? You take care of the pest, you take care of the the the, 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 um, the crop eating animals. You are just sure to have a good yield. So that's how life is. Whatever you harvest in life at the right time. At, with the right resources, you would, of course, yield. So for me, I know that my future is definitely bright because by God's grace, I'm putting in the right work. By God's grace, I have the right people around my, 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 my environment. I have a good relationship with people and I have the right mindset towards life. And I'm, 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 I'm deliberate. I know the things I want. I know the things I do not want. So for me, I'm sure the future holds so many bright things, so many amazing things. I mean, a lot of things are going to happen. I'm certain about it. You know, I'm certain about it. It's going to be amazing. Amazing. Yes, I believe that it's going to be amazing. And so, you know, um, when I end, I always ask my um, guests, if you had three things, your top three, I'm going to say T.D. Bear's top, top three of how to respond to that moment when it chooses you, or it can be whatever you think, three wisdom pearls for someone, what would those three things be to help someone out there to move into action for their dreams? Yes, my top three would be understand where you're coming from, understand where you are, and understand where you're going to. Mm. Because these are the basic things to, to help you because this will keep you in check, this will keep you humble, this will keep you you know, uh, uh, um, active, this will keep you, when I say, exposed to learning things. So when you understand where you're coming from, Right. It should check your humility, to check your pride, it should check the way you react to the situation. If you understand where you are, you understand that there is so much to improve about yourself, that, that where you are is not the final destination of your life. And when you understand where you're going to, that will help you to build the right discipline, to build the right network and the right relationship to taking you there. So those three things have been what has been keeping me going and would be the three factors to my life. That's awesome. And then one big thing that I think I heard through your whole theme is how you took charge and worked on yourself like 24 seven. I heard that through, you said you were studying books and things like that. So why is that so important, honestly, for you to develop yourself, you know, even for you to become an awesome neurosurgeon, why is it so important for you to engage in that self-development? Well, I would say this by saying that the value to diamond, the value to gold, is because it is rare, right? Before you get a diamond, it's because it's rare. Now, this typically that, that that is typical to our life, right? For us to have value, right, in our for us to give ourselves value, we must put in the the deliberate hard work to giving ourselves that value. You know, mostly I do say is that. The world will not celebrate mediocre. The world will not celebrate mediocre. And of course, if you want to be an agent of change, there is no two ways about it. The hard work must be put, right? You must put the hard work. And most time I talk about it, not just necessarily the hard work, but the smart work. Because I have a lot of people who are saying, oh, I'm working hard, I'm working hard, I'm working hard. But yet they see no results in their life. The yeah. problem is because they're working hard, you're not working smart in direction to your purpose in life. You know, so I would say that... The, you can't take away the place of hard work in our life. You can't take away the place of discipline. These are the most important thing to, to be excellent in life. For me, I had I had I had worked a lot. I had had I mean 
literally when I was in school, my first degree, I would leave my school, I would leave uh, my, my classes, I would travel for one week to go and do art work somewhere. You know, those, those, those times in my life, the times I was reading, I was putting the energy, the work, and, and I think that is paying off right now. So I would say we, we cannot displace, we cannot undermine the place of hard work, the place of discipline, and the place of smart work in the things that we do. And I think this particular characteristic build us and give us that value that the world wants to see. And I would love to end by saying that you may not be famous, right, for putting the hard work, right? Because the beauty about hard work, the beauty about the better person, right, the better vision of yourself, right? It, it's not about the end result, but about who you become in the process of developing yourself. That's what matters. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm ready to shout over here. <laughs> okay. I got one more and then I promise this is it, but I really want you to inspire a young person out there that's, you know, starting on their journey. What, what can you tell them to help them to move where they need to be? Well, I would say this by, by tackling one of the major problems that young people have, which is fear, fear of failure, fear of not succeeding fear of launching out, which I would say it has, it has been a major problem for young people. And just to encourage every young person that convenience or comfort is a killer of destiny, right? Mm. Because if you want to be comfortable where you are, you would not grow, right? The reason why a seed grows is because it's heated up in the soil and it dies and then grow. That's how seeds grow. And as young people, if you want to be excellent, you want to excel in what you do, you have to be dead to the things you want to do. You have to put your mind, your soul in the things you want to do. And you have to launch out from your comfort zone because nothing grows at the comfort level, right? So the fear, you need to overcome the fear of criticism, which has been the problem of young people. Would I be loved? Would I be respected? Would I, make, would I be successful? Would I be valued? And those, those things are things that affect us from doing the things we would have wished to do. And most, most people who want to go into the medical field would, be, would, would say, Will I fail through medical school? Will I be successful? Will I have yeah. a job? You know, these are, these, are not, these are not things you should worry about, right? But you should worry about things that you can control. Most times I tell people, see, why worry about things you cannot solve, right? And the things yeah. you can solve, why worry about them? You know, so it's important that young people eliminate fear. It's not easy, right? But it can be done. And it's a step-by-step -step process. Where we start from the right foundation, good mentorship, and the right environment, and we build up to achieving that. So first of all, eliminate fear, the issue for the stars. Awesome. Wow. What a power pack message for today. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on the podcast. And um, how could people get in touch with you or support you? Um, let us know how we can help. Well, um, I would say, first of all, I'm, I'm hosting a, first, a, a big conference in Nigeria, which is going to be in October which we call the Championing Change Conference. And it's going to be um, targeted to young people to, you know, to encourage young people that they can be agents of change too. So um, when that is done, we'll call for promotion, for share, you know, for, for uh, partnership, for collaboration, for those who want to collaborate with us. But for those who want to support, you can reach out to my management, you know, at management at gdbay.com. You know, so with there, you can, you know, Talk about how much you want to support us. Talk about how well you want to partner with us on projects. You want to partner with us on, on hosting events, you know, speaking engagements. It's amazing. So whatever support comes from the community is amazing. But it's um, for, for that, you can reach out to my management, which is management at chideberrybay.com. Okay, great. Well, I so appreciate you. And I am so honored that you would stop by here at When the Moment Chooses You. And I really believe that uh, God's hand is on your life and that you're again ready to, to totally disrupt systems and help transform self and systems, quite honestly, um, all the way back to our school books. I mean, this is absolutely just innovative in so many ways. And so I just so applaud you for the work that you're doing. I hope you come back and visit us someday because I know uh, your message was, I got like super inspired. <laughs> I'm just telling you. So thank you so much. And we will see him soon again. I hope and congratulations on your endeavor. And I just, I'm just going to be watching you. Um, he has some awesome stuff on YouTube too. If you guys want to check out his TEDx talk. 
Okay. Thank you so much. Greetings, everyone, and thank you so much for joining When the Moment Chooses You podcast, a podcast that creates and inspires destiny moments because every heartbeat matters. We engage in compassionate, courageous conversation because truly I believe that stories are a way to inspire other people to move into action and be the best and highest expression of themselves. So I'd love for you to subscribe, follow, share, and like. And also I have a private Facebook page called When the Moment Chooses You. I would love for you to go over and to like so that you can stay current. I do host live sessions there. And so it's more engagement. You're you're welcome to... um, ask questions. And a little bit later, we're going to be doing some fun stuff there. So I invite you to go over and like my page. Thank you so much for joining. And I want you to remember that there's something significant for you that you need to do while you're still here on earth. And you want to be able to respond to what will you do when the moment chooses you. 